All right, let's welcome in Tom Murphy to the program this morning. Tom, we got a lot to catch up on, man. Football, basketball, even baseball with the big okay. series. Tom's a Georgia guy, but he's in on some Masters this week, too. So, <laughs> Yeah, I'll probably watch me a little Masters. Um, I, me and a, a friend were once driving to a basketball game at South Carolina, and we decided to pull in there. And we're driving down the, the big, I can't even think of the name of the lane. Magnolia Lane. the guard. Yeah. Magnolia, and we get to the guard shack, and we're like, hey, we just wanted to go look around. The guy goes, ah, no, turn around. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we didn't get to go in. Yeah, not happening today. So, hey, no. big big day with news yesterday, Tom. Uh, we'll start with football, and uh, now a, a very thinning quarterback room with Lucas Coley uh, entering the transfer portal. Yeah, um, you know, the number of times that Sam Pittman has said how, how much he really likes Cade Fortin, the transfer from South Florida, who's a walk-on at this point, uh, was an indication because you already have K.J. Jefferson, the entrenched starter, and then you have Malik Hornsby, who, by the way, apparently had a great scrimmage on last Saturday as a quarterback only and um, is coming along. I mean, he looked pretty good in practice Tuesday as well. So I think Coley figured, you know, I'm already, you know, three or three B on the, the depth chart and, um, maybe there's some greener pastures elsewhere. So it does hurt your overall depth at quarterback. But I think when Cade Renfro gets healthy and then you got Cade Fortin, you got four guys right there. So um, I think I think it's in decent shape to get through next season. Mateo Soli also entered the portal yesterday. Tom, he's a Razorback legacy, kind of down by your neck of the woods as well. And I know he's probably had conversations with his dad, Junior. Uh, you just he, he didn't you expected him to take that one bigger step, and it just never looked like it was going to happen. Uh, your thoughts on where he could end up and just kind of his career at Arkansas? And I think I think he played thirty games, if I remember that right. Yeah, and then. I don't know. It's, his career arc is one of the great mysteries of the last half decade around here because Steve Caldwell thought enough of him that he came in and he was a starter as a true freshman after Dorian Gerald was injured. And he had a broken a bone in his hand at the time. Um, so their depth at defensive end already was suspect. Um, and, you know, he didn't make a ton of tackles or you know, didn't have a sack that year, but he played with a broken hand. Uh, but he just um, he didn't he wasn't a starter after that <clears throat> the next two seasons. So um, and honestly, Sam Pittman has said how so often how like he likes big guys, and Matteo Soli is not a big big dude, and, and so not a prototypical defensive end. And um, maybe he just saw the writing on the wall. He was running with a third team and. Didn't see that, that playing time was ahead of him for this coming year, except maybe on special teams again. So you hate to see it from a legacy kid, but, uh, you know, there, there's ends on campus, and they brought in guys last year in Williams and Etsy that were immediately ahead of him, and maybe Landon Jackson would be in the same boat as well. So um, I think it's probably a playing time situation. On the other front, basketball news, you've got a variety of things happen. We'll start with the positives, bringing in the Mitchell brothers yesterday, 6'9", 6'10", twin brothers out of Rhode Island, started their career at Maryland, four stars coming out of high school. Tom, you've got only two players on this roster that were three stars. The rest of them, the other 11 are four stars out of high school. What did you make of the additions of the Mitchell brothers? Well, I just think that from a defensive standpoint, they're, they love to they love to play defense and block shots and things like that. And I was looking at Scotty Bordelon's story in, on Whole Hog Sports about their defensive ratings, and 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 they're up there. Uh, and and he had some quotes from a guy who did a story on them at Rhode Island about how much they love defense and rotating, understanding rotations and attacking the defensive boards aggressively. So, you know, it's the makings of of a team that, and and then they score around the rim on offense. So, you know, it's going to be a a roster full of talented players once again, and that's why Arkansas basketball right now is a big-time national brand that is attracting people. And uh, so 
I think in added addition, it would have been nice to have had an ex- extra 6'10 rebounder on last year's squad to help with Williams. But um, now, now they got two more, and if Williams comes back, then you got the makings of, you know, across the board, 6'9, 6'10, several guys that can be functional and, um, and look pretty uh, athletic as well. Remember asking you on Monday about staff shakeup because it had always just been part of the headlines or storylines, at least following a basketball season, as someone exits Musselman's staff. Yesterday we learned it's yeah. probably the guy you weren't thinking, Clay Mosier, who'd been with him the longest and had worked in several uh, places and teams and venues with him. He's exiting yeah. the staff, and then we find out the answer to that just about an hour later. Yeah, a little, you know, a little bit of a um, mystery there, um, but. You know, Anthony Ruda has been a, a guy who um, has been really loyal and devoted, and, and Musselman cites him all the time. We're talking about, like, scheduling data and and all kind of um, net ranking type data. And so I think Ruda will be a, a welcome addition and, you know, wish, wish Clay the best. Yeah, so now you've got that spot to fill in the staff. I don't know if – it would be the right move. I just I see Ronnie Brewer more and more involved. You know, in what you see visually during the games and the interaction on the bench with the players and uh, his his role in timeouts. It appears I I wonder if his role will get elevated to maybe gain some more skills and do some of the things Ruda was doing or um, or how they're grooming him to maybe move up in that program. Yeah, I'd like to think so. And you're right. Every time <laughs> time they show the bench, uh, there was a game this year where. Uh, a Musselman was mad at the officials, and Brewer was like the front line. And and man, he's a solid dude. So um, yeah, I'd like to see that happen. Uh, a, he's such a great kid, and you know, I'm I'm kind of a neighbor to his dad, Ron, and so I see Ronnie driving around in this area a good bit, and um, I think he's a good guy. And hopefully, some better things will happen for him down the line. We're talking with Tom Murphy, Arkansas Democrat, is at Whole Hog Sports. This morning, Tom, the anticipation of this upcoming basketball season, it's pretty crazy. I can't think of a time that I've been doing this. You guys would probably have a better perspective because you got some more years on me. But with the baseball team being number two in the country, the football team with the best home schedule potentially in its history, and the basketball team that could be a preseason top five, top three, even in some people's minds, the number one team in the country. How do you think Arkansas fans are kind of diversifying their their fan portfolio to this point? It's pretty difficult to keep up with everything right now. Yeah, it really is. I mean, and if you're a big time devoted fan, you're going to have your season tickets to a sport or two, or maybe three, uh, and then pay attention to all the other stuff. I mean, we just got through with the the big overlap. You know, when when you've got men's bas- men and women's basketball going on at the same time as spring football and baseball. And, and now baseball has entered the conference phase, and it looks like despite the fact that they've had some clutch hitting issues and uh, still would like a couple of guys to rise up in the bullpen, they're winning games. And if they had just somehow scored a run in the ninth inning against Mississippi State, they'd have a three-game lead in the West you know, after three weekends, which is really almost unheard of. Uh, but instead, they have a two-game lead and and some tough, tough, tough series coming up. Yeah. So it's just if if you're an Arkansas fan right now, you look across the campus and they're competing for titles in in virtually every sport. And it was the same case last year when they won ten uh, SEC titles, an incredible number. And I, I just think the whole athletic department is. Uh, there's good coaches in place. There's good recruiting in place. I think NIL has helped Arkansas, you know, as much maybe as anybody in the country, except for maybe Texas A&M. <laughs> um, and, <laughs> and, and, and the, the, they like working for Hunter Juracek, who's got a great personality. And uh, I don't know. It's just a good time right now to, to you know be involved in Arkansas athletics. All right, so let's talk about the success in baseball. They head on the road tonight, 5 o'clock this evening, take on an unranked Florida team, which is, you'll say that very often in baseball, unranked Florida. Uh, facing a lefty tonight in Hunter Barco. He's got a sub-2 ERA, a 5-1 and one record. Tom, left-handed pitching has often caused the Razorbacks trouble. What do you think happens tonight in Gainesville? Yeah, it looks like it looks like low scoring, and hopefully Connor Nolan will be on his game. 
And, you know, Arkansas is doing this with a day less rest than Florida. You got the revenge factor from the Gators last year who who came here. And, you know, they weren't they weren't a powerhouse by any means, but they had some good players. And if I remember, scoring on Barco was difficult last year. Um, and I watched a, a good bit of Florida's game against Georgia last week, and Georgia wasn't doing a whole lot against Barco. I mean, I think somebody might have hit a two-run homer. So, you know, when you got a chance to score against him, you better take advantage. Uh, they got to have some more quality two out at bats against him, and and hope Florida gives them a little something, hit batters, look, boot the ball around a little to get some runs across. But it should be a really good series. Uh, you know, Kevin O'Sullivan probably feeling a little bit of heat down there in the new stadium to be a, a contender again. So um, their toughest series remain because I know Mississippi State is going to continue to get better. But when you think about who they've played so far, you know, it hasn't been the toughest schedule. I mean, they've got, they've got Ole Miss and they've got Vandy and, and some, some tough ones coming up. LSU coming up as, as well. All right. One more football mm-hmm. question before we go, we were, I want to get your take on this with, with Lucas Coley exiting the program and the, now the lack of numbers at quarterback who runs the scout team in practice this fall? <laughs> and you, you think about that, you think, oh, that's not a big deal, but it, it is kind of a big deal to, to get you ready in for week to week in the SEC. With these kind of numbers, that's now a, a thought, I think, that coaching staff's you know got to get ahead of. Yeah, um, they'll probably look to at least bring somebody in for that purpose. And then I would think that Cade Renfro, um, I guess he'd be about uh, eight, eight or nine months out from his, surgery because it was late in the year it was bowl practice Mm -hmm. for Renfro so um you know he'd be on on kind of a rehab deal and I I think he'd be a candidate for being with the scout team but yeah you you would definitely uh want to see somebody bring somebody in to uh to be your mobile run around quarterback guy like a Jefferson or a Malik Hornsby would would present for other teams so um yeah, that's probably going to be a item to check off their list between now and when fall camp opens is to, is to secure a, a good scout teamer. Yeah, point that we often look over, but something that uh, with, with this thin of numbers, you don't have the luxury of throwing one of your true quarterbacks out there. Tom, good stuff. We'll talk to you Monday and wrap up the weekend. Outstanding. Y'all have a great weekend. See ya. Right, Tom Murphy with us here on the line is your number one source for all your betting needs, sports info, and odds. Find all the latest sports developments, including this week's odds for the Masters Championship and the start of Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino and poker games. It's super easy to get started, so join today. Learn why everyone is saying Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on popular sports and games. Bet online, where the game starts.